Welcome back to our ongoing study in the Gospel of Matthew. We have gone through 27 chapters of this Gospel and now find us ourselves, obviously, at chapter 28. Chapter 28 is the glorious chapter. It is the chapter of the resurrection. Slowly, steadily, and surely we want to work through this chapter and gain out of it some of the truths that it has for us today. We are going to be reading from Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. Reading from the Jerusalem Bible. After the Sabbath and toward dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdalene and the other Mary went in to visit the sepulcher. Now, note, if you look at other gospel accounts, we know that there were other women present. Matthew has just focused on these two. Doesn't explain, doesn't justify, just says these two. When we look at the life of faith, I think we need to understand that there are many parts to it that we have to get right. And when we look at the life of faith, we can pick individual parts of the faith to stop and think about what needs to be grown and developed in our lives as believers. In other words, if we take one aspect of faith, we can spend time talking about it, but don't misconstrue that to say, oh, the faith is only about that. There are times where we need to just get very detailed and find a particular spot and talk about it. So when we talk in the, this next study, we're going to talk about one aspect of faith. I don't think that always gets mentioned in the life of the church. And I think as we will explore later in this, why it, it's not the easiest topic for us to discuss. And that is the role of imagination in the faith. Now, bear with me. I, I know that as soon as you say that, all sorts of negative things can come into mind. And that can be misconstrued right off the get-go. But let's work our way through on the need for us as Christians to reshape our imagination. No one comes to faith and from that moment on sees the world from that perspective. Foundational truth here. A person who comes to Christ, a teenager at 17, a young mother of three at the age of 25, a person who works as a self-employed business person at 40 comes to faith. Regardless of the age, we all come to that faith from a way of seeing and understanding the world. That will not change the moment we accept Christ. Now, we're not saying that there isn't a beginning of change and a beginning of a new look at the world. But what we're saying is when we come to faith, that faith experience does not completely transform how we see the world, good, bad, or indifferent. That continues on. A person who was obnoxious before experiencing Christ, the Christian faith can be, remain obnoxious afterwards. And we understand that the tragedy is that the newfound faith of a person can give a sort of justification if that person was obnoxious before now they can be justified for it because they have the truth on their side. A person who has gone up in a cultural milieu where money is the measure of all things, money it is, says who and what you are, money indicates whether you are successful or not. When that person comes to faith, that person can judge people spiritually by their money. And the reality is, if you live in North America and experience a church in North America, you are probably inundated through Christian culture on the fact that money is the measure of successful Christian living, often. You see, what we're saying here is we struggle to imagine anything different because we cannot imagine that there could be something different. So what I'm saying on one level is that part of the problem is when we come to faith, we have created an image of the world, our imagination, and we will view the faith 
through that lens and cannot imagine anything else. The women who went to the tomb were Jews who believed in the resurrection. Let us be clear on that point. The resurrection that was way out in the future. They could not imagine the idea that the resurrection could be a present reality. Remember that Jesus had taught that he would rise again. We can assume in moments away from the crowd, his followers asked him questions, including questions about the resurrection. These women probably had talked to Jesus about the resurrection and the future hope. Yet there is a sense that these followers of Jesus had no idea that Jesus could rise from the dead. They could not begin to believe and feel that this could be a real possibility. You see, the problem was not reason or of knowledge. They simply lacked the imagination to see that it could be. In other words, their worldview, their understanding, colored how they heard what Jesus said and how they would see things now. The women probably went to the tomb with a sense of gloom. They were probably emotionally drained from the events of the last few days. They were in Jerusalem and were from Galilee. And so probably longing to escape to the familiar and the comfortable, which was at home. We understand that if you're going through a rough time, the last thing you want is to be in some strange environment. Get me to where I can be comfortable, kick out my heels, enjoy my favorite chair, and allow me to escape from the world. What they were doing was what needed to be done. These women were going to the tomb because the body needed to be properly prepared. Who knows if the anointing and the shrouding of the Bible, of the body, excuse me, the anointing and the shrouding of the body might be their last task in Jerusalem. It could be that there were plans already in play to return home. Again, remember, they were not from Jerusalem. They were from Galilee. In fact, as they went to the tomb, it may have been the case that they were beginning to move on from Jesus. You know, what are we saying? Jesus was now dead. What they thought could happen with Jesus wasn't going to happen. They might be going to the tomb with the sense it was time to move on. The women did not go to the tomb with a sense of hope or a sense of expectation. And how can I justify that statement? If you think the body's going to be raised from the dead, you're not going there to shroud and anoint the body. The fact that they're going to shroud and anoint the body says they don't think he is going to be raised from the dead. Now, we talked about this in the beginning. Why does imagination create a little discomfort in the church? Because we have to be clear that there is a difference between visions and and in imaginations. Visions have never historically been a mainstream part of the Christian faith. It is sort of like the uninvited relative who has that annoying time of showing up from time to time. We cannot go back in church history and say that visions have not had a part to play in the Christian faith. There are some noted mystics, some noted spiritual people who have had visions. What I'm saying to you is that the Christian church has largely said this is not appropriate. Why? Because we understand that visions can lead to all sorts of crank theological practices. And in that sense, we say no, visions are not ultimately of God. But we understand that there is a side of the faith where every once in a while it shows up in the life of the faith. And some of those visions can be okay, but we feel largely uncomfortable with it because we know how this can be abused, misused, and lead to destructive theological practices. And so what I'm saying is, when we talk about imagination, we're not talking about visions. Visions are something that comes, you know, within 
No, imagination is about seeing the world from a different perspective, looking beyond the way we normally see things, to begin to see that there's a different way that we can see the world. Imagination for the Christian is where we begin to see what can be possible by God's grace. If you are going to grow in faith and in grace, you have to grow in imagination. In the modern world where rationalization is king, this will not be easy. And the New International Version of uh, version of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul states, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Can we imagine that God can raise his son on the third day?